Today we're going roguelike and looking at Have a Nice Death, a fast-paced side-scrolling adventure where you play as Death himself, the overworked CEO of Death Incorporated who finds himself on the brink of burning out trying to get his out-of-control minions back in line. During your adventures, you'll use an arsenal of kick-ass weapons, incredible attacks, and spectacular spells to help remind your employees just who the boss is. You also meet support staff that help you get acquainted with the game, sell upgrades, provide hints, backstory, and so much more. During your travels, you'll pick up various in-game currencies such as Solary, Prismium, and Gold Ingots. Solary can be spent on food, upgrades, and weapons at places like the shop and in the control room during gameplay. Prismium is rare and can be used to unlock slots at the store that widens your selection and also allows you to upgrade weapons. And finally, Gold Ingots, found both during gameplay and awarded during your performance review after you die. They allow you to unlock weapons and food from Joe between runs, which expands your variety of random drops found during gameplay. You also find an assortment of items as you play, such as healing animas, solary, weapons, spells, hit point and mana upgrades among them. The game allows you to string together movements, attacks and dodges for some truly awe-inspiring combinations at what feels like light speed. It really makes you feel like you're unstoppable, until you're dead and starting all over again. The graphics are a high point for this one. The hand-drawn characters, smooth and fast animations, and detailed environments are all superbly done, especially for the genre. The level designs are quite a sight, with each stage of the game having its own unique theme, enemies, and bosses. The sound is also very good. The clean and crisp sound effects for every event in the game are also very well put together. The selection of music, while simple, is also very good and suits the game incredibly well. I was thoroughly impressed with the quality. One area some may say is lacking is in voiceovers, as the game uses voice approximations during the conversations found in the game, but I don't think it's really a detractor at all and suits the game just fine. The story is quite unique, and although simple, complements the theme of the game rather well. It's not very deep by any means. The introductory bits help to illustrate what's going on and expands as you progress through the five unique stages. The gameplay found here is really excellent. It's a game that's easy to pick up and play, but difficult to truly master. The controls are simple and responsive, the action is quite good and at times very frantic, so the little respite in between each floor or level in the game is quite welcome. The gamepad is recommended for this one, although I was perfectly content using a keyboard and mouse. Yeah. Let's start by saying this game can be beaten in a few hours by a highly skilled player, but most of us are going to take between 5 and 10 hours at minimum to break through to the end. It's a blast through every step of the way, you'll kill fast but also die fast, and for a game that's still in early access, it feels like a complete and extremely well put together 2D action roguelike. My only real gripe with the game is the lack of permanent upgrades found in many other roguelike games. It's fun, it's quirky, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it plays extremely well even with a modest setup for us PC gamers. I'll certainly be keeping an eye on this one to see what the future brings. 